Hello, it's Chaplin73 here. Uh, you're joining me today for another interview on my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining in. Um, I'm joined today by John Nation. Um, hello, John. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Um, I'll crack on with the questions, John, and that'll give you an opportunity to tell people who you are. And um, So tell us a bit about who you are, what you do, and where you're based. Okay. I am currently... a uh, Bristol Street Art Tour Guide with Wear the Wall. Prior to that, I was heavily involved with the rave scene as a promoter, but prior to that, what I'm mainly known for in Bristol is a youth and community worker and basically set up a graffiti arts project in 1985. How long ago was that? Many, many years ago, where basically I was trying to harness the energies of young graffiti writers back in the day give them a safe space to paint, uh, encourage and nurture a generation of artists that went on to have a massive impact in sh shaping creative culture, not only graffiti in the city, but the early beginnings of street art. And many of those young artists that I worked with back then are still, to this current day, pursuing a living, involved with art, involved with festivals, and it's something I'm really proud of. So come full circle again, like I said, for the last eight years, I've been a tour guide for uh, Bristol Street Art Tours uh, with Wear the Wall. Uh, currently, I live in Gloucester, where I moved to uh, eight years ago to be with my wife, Kath. Uh, it was a bit of a culture shock when I first moved to Gloucester because I was like, where's the culture? Where's, <laughs> where's the creativity? Where's the art? Where's the music scene? But as I've grown to accept where I live in in Gloucester. It's, it's a lovely area, it's great countryside, it's close to Cheltenham, which obviously you've got the Cheltenham Paint Festival. Um, there are still some pieces of art in and around Gloucester, but not that much. So yeah, that's that's basically a bit about myself, really. It, I'm, I'm the same down here in Cornwall. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of strange because Cornwall is um, very much linked to the history of art. Um, when, you, when you look at like yep. the Newland Painters, St Ives, Barbara Hepworth, people like that, you know, Barbara Hepworth is like the second biggest um, sculptor in, in, on the scene at a time. Um, you've got a lot of history around Cornwall. But when you look at sort of like street art and stuff like that, there's nothing here really. Uh, it's very, very minimal. And um, um, whereas Cornwall used to be sort of like on the cutting edge of art, um, it, it, to me, it doesn't feel like it is anymore. It, it, you walk around the, the villages and the towns in um, Cornwall, and you see the same old stuff being regurgitated over and over again, which, yeah. which I think is a crying shame because years ago, the pioneers were all in Cornwall, which, you know, but, but that's a whole yeah. other conversation. Yeah, when, when I first moved to Gloucester, what stood out for me, there was two probably prominent artists, or maybe three, whose work I would see here, which was Beastie, mm -hmm. uh, Trix, and DK. Yeah. And... Um, You've had obviously visiting artists who, who, who've added additions to various locations in, in and around the city, including when they had the kind of Gloucester Paint Festival, which was linked to the Renegade Festival at Cafe Rennie. So you had um, Mr. Sens come here, Jody, SP Zero, Inky, and a few others. But that was a good few years ago now, and it's, mm -hmm. it, it's crying out for... Uh, a decent kind of creative culture event but i think their problem as a city gloucester is that cheltenham has stolen a march on them and andy dice davis's event in cheltenham is a great festival now i really love that festival and the work that andy's done in such a conservative town to 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 be able to build a festival like he has there it is really hats off to him seriously yeah, yeah, amazing job. I, 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 obviously, I've interviewed Andy before, and um, I painted at Cheltenham, which which was great. Yeah, I know you did. And uh, yeah, it was it was you know fabulous atmosphere, and you know exactly what you expect from a paint festival. So it was ideal. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what advice would you give to an aspiring artist hoping to make a name for themselves in the street art scene in the twenty first century? Obviously, obviously, you've been around street art a lot <laughs> for a very long time. So, what advice would you give to somebody now just coming in? All right, the first one, originality. Be as original as you possibly can. Um, second, have belief 
in, in, in yourself as an artist, you're going to be, meet many bumps on the road along, along your profession, you know. Being taken seriously as an artist is, is hard, you know. There are so many artists out there. I, I would probably say now there are more artists, and I lose, use the term loosely, than probably ever before, you know. Um, but I look at many of the young people I first started working with in the 80s, and I look at them where they are now, People like Jody, people like Nick Walker, people like Inky, uh, Chio, just to name four. They've they've gone on and become kind of household names, as you would say, within the street art community. But even those guys have, during their their journey from humble beginnings to where they are now, have all had their struggles, all have had their knockbacks, all have had. Um, dismissals you know where they've been dismissed as not being relevant or current or their art isn't on power par with other artists then they've all just had the belief in their own skill sets their own art and i think now for young people coming into this to this this culture in the scene it's it's slightly easier to probably make a name for yourself than previously because i think with the, the explosion of social media uh, and all the various media platforms, it's easier to get yourself out there and your art out there than ever before. But you, you need to have a strong media presence for sure. And I, I know for a fact, my daughter is a great artist and she's studying um, art at school at the moment. She's in top set and she wants to be go up, come on to be going to become an art teacher. But in, in terms of, art that she's inspired by, she's not inspired by any kind of street art, which people find astounding given my, my history and my roots. Um, she's more into uh, biro and pencil illustration and drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and she said that there are many people of her age that are, she sees is, is potentially having a lot of potential as artists, but none of them want to go on in her art class to pursue a, a, a career in, in, in art, they they just want to go on and do something different. But she wants to become an art teacher and engage and facilitate other young people when she's old enough to to become a creative and be expressive. And like I said, younger generation artists nowadays, you know, there there are probably more than ever before. I just know from how many artists there are in Bristol, and the amount of yeah. Lot yeah. requests I get from artists to like their Facebook page or or follow me on Instagram or share my work please John there, there are tons and tons and tons and some points I look at it like there's a deluge or a too much too many in in the size of a city of Bristol but that's not a bad thing but advice to a young person is seriously for me have the faith have the belief have some vision but most of all originality and passion for your artwork is an utmost for me, truly. Yeah, and um, yeah, continu I'm, I'm, continually putting it out there is 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 the yeah. thing, isn't it? It's, it's that it's that pushing past the rejections, which which a lot of artists have alluded to um, in when I've previously spoken to them on, on in these interviews is is that um, uh, the ability to be able to be rejected and just still carry on and. Yeah, you, you've got you've got to have uh, some Teflon resistance about you because many many people I know as artists have constantly got knockbacks and are still getting knockbacks. But yeah. it's how you meet those chap those knockbacks and how you respond and persevere and never give up because you never know when one lucky break or one person sees your artwork that could just be the catalyst for doors opening up for you and you just got to keep going, you know? And there are lots of guys I know that are painting uh, and women as well um, that aren't in it for money or fame or fortune. They just want to paint for the sheer love of their creativity mm -hmm. and for the giving mm -hmm. of art to others. It's yeah. simple as that. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so moving on from that because you've you've just mentioned this as well um what do you see as the pros and cons of the modern tools that are available um to artists such as social media digital art etc and how that contrasts with what when you were working with young people um back in the day you know back in the, the 80s and 90s 
wow, the contrast is extreme. Because social media, uh, for all its warts and all its uh, problems that many people have with social media, especially you can have online bullying, that's a huge problem. And um, for me, it's a great tool. And I, I didn't want to really mention this guy's name, but Banksy for me is the ultimate in terms of someone who used social media to such a great effect to to build this kind of global brand that he is. And he is a brand to to get his artwork out there, to get the messaging out there. And the platforms that he used has is, is given him an audience that pre-internet age, you as an artist, you would have never have had. And so it's really important that, pro, that artists have a strong, strong site, that the imagery, the output is consistent. Uh, the way that you engage with your followers uh, and the content you put out is is massive, but it also has never been easier for me, I see it, is for an artist to actually get their work out to a, a, a wider audience. Just at a click of a button, art is viewable and accessible for so many people now. When I first started in, in the graffiti scene, how I got involved was by documenting art in its raw sense by using a, a, a camera. I was lucky and fortunate enough that I had a, a great 35 millimeter camera. My aunt worked for bonus print and true print. So I had free films. I could get free prints in. Um, and I documented the real early roots of Bristol graffiti from 1983. So people like Freedy, Delta from Massive Attack, Nick Walker, Inky, Felix, all these guys. And then the whole Barton Hill journey from around 85 to around 1992. Um, and then obviously I, I was involved with what was called photo trading. So back then there was no internet and it was the old school way of writing letters, sending off batches of photographs to other like-minded artists, first and foremost in the UK. Then you would get links and contacts to artists around Europe. So France, Germany, the Netherlands. Uh, then I had links to the USA, to Australia, Canada. And we had this huge global network of contacts exchanging art, photographs, ideas, independent magazines that people were creating in their bedrooms with black and white paste-ups and letter set. And back then, a lot of it was word of mouth and knowing the right people. And there was very few of us in the UK back in that time span that were fortunate enough to have a decent camera that we could document and take good photographs to document the archive of the roots and history of, of art. And obviously as time has progressed, quality of equipment, quality of outputs uh, and the, the explosion of the internet has made it so more accessible than ever it was back in my day. And currently I'm involved with um, an exhibition that takes place in Bristol in the end of June called Vanguard. Now that show has got archive material from myself, um, Beezers who did the book Wild Days, a guy called Martin Jones who was Goldie's original manager and curated a lot of early shows in the mid 1980s up in the Birmingham and Wolverhampton areas. You've got Henry Chalfont, who's involved as well, Martha Cooper. Those are two global names associated with the documentation of an art form that is still prevalent today. And I think my lucky star is that back then I was heavily involved with something, but wanted to just basically document what was happening. At the time, I didn't realize how important possibly many of those photographs that I took back in the day would be relevant and play an important role in something like the Vanguard show today. But for me, social media is obviously Instagram, Facebook, all the various other platforms are hugely influential in the way that art is viewed in the, the wider public domain. And like I said, there are so many people on there now. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm on Instagram, but I don't share street art. I share my archive of classic graffiti and i've got people following me on there that are people from all around the world some many of them are artists whose work i'm showcasing from 
the the mid 80s to the early 90s and they're like commenting on wow where did you get these photographs from what i've not even got this documentation of my own work and it's a case of trading being lucky i visited amsterdam 12 times between 1982 and 91 i've, I've visited berlin hamburg paris and so i traveled to document a culture that really then wasn't uh, a, a culture that was popular like street art is so hugely popular to this day and so yeah social media has got a massive role and impact in shaping obviously the the current street art scene so for for an artist you must 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 put out a, a, a good social media presence you must yeah and just yeah. and just keep pushing your art out there you know and at the end of the day it's not all about the likes it's not all about the followers it's about you getting your work out there first and foremost then hopefully the likes and the followers and the shares come but it doesn't matter about whether you're like banks who's got 10.6 million view followers on instagram or you're somebody who's only got a thousand it's all relevant to to you as an artist really yeah i mean it, it, yeah. Some, touching on something you said you know with regard in social media it's, it's important to remember that it is a tool uh, and, and yeah, it's a tool. to use it as a tool and not not let it be your master um which yeah. which you know i work in um, mental health in my day job and um okay. obviously you know social media is one of those things that regularly gets a, a bad press with mental health because it can oh, sure it can have a, quite a negative impact on people's um, mental well-being um because they're chasing the likes and because they're chasing the you know the, the, the following them on whatever but um it is important to remember that it's a tool just to get your work out there and um you know it might not get seen today it might not get seen tomorrow but in 10 years time when you're a bit bigger people will go back and look at those pictures that you that you put yeah, out yeah. 10 years ago you know and and you know so it's not about that instant um gratification from from you yeah. know putting that picture out there and waiting to see how many likes it gets it's just about using it as a tool just to just to document stuff and like you said you never know how important um those photos that you've taken might be one day you know you just you just don't know no one could have predicted what would have happened with the bristol art scene for instance you know yeah. at the and, time and also, there was a lot of negativity about the bristol art scene and, and people were trying to buffer it out and get rid of it and make it a crime and arrest people and and you know if that had all gone very very differently there wouldn't be a relevant today yeah <laughs> but what i was gonna say also in defense of social media this last 12 to 14 months during the pandemic where would a lot of people be without social media it doesn't bear thinking about mm -hmm. the connectivity that people have been able to have and just being able to talk to loved ones and and communicate with the wider world you know that is something that i will always say in defense of social media whether it was facebook it's like us on zoom today i yeah up until six months ago i never heard of zoom and this is the first time I've ever done a Zoom interview, you know? So, you know, for all its negatives that social media gets thrown its way, there are also a lot of positives. And for, for many artists, it has been a huge positive, especially for a lot of the, what I call the mainstream bigger artists, but it can also have a real positive effect for young aspiring artists. Mm -hmm. Truly, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. It's um, it's 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 enabled me to um uh, stay sane during the, the lockdown and doing these interviews with creative people because um obviously living in Cornwall itself is quite is quite a um, it's quite a jaunt to somewhere like Bristol um when we're not okay in, yeah I but, I know when I seen you at the Cheltenham when I seen you at the Cheltenham Paint Fest you know that is a I was only saying to Catherine that that's where you live and that is a hell of a jaunt yeah which you've got to be committed to, to, to just go and paint at a festival like that. Yeah. Really yeah. And it, and it is, it is, but it's nice to have that opportunity to, and obviously over the last 12 months, the, the only paint festival that I managed to get to in the last 12 months was the one at um, Western Supermare that Lynn put together. Yeah. 
Uh, and that was a very, very different experience to what a paint festival normally is. We did it over two days. We, we were social distance across boards. So there was a board in between each person. So, you, you know, it, it was a very different experience. And um, I, I do think that without the technology, like you say, I think the whole experience of, of the lockdown would have been very, very different for a, for a lot of people. So, yeah, I think social media gets a bad rap at times, but it is has been a, a lifesaver to some people. Uh, yeah, for sure. So obviously you're very passionate about um, the art scene in Bristol. Um, so tell us about some of the highlights of the Bristol art scene that you've witnessed along your journey. Oh my God, there are so many. I would say first and foremost, one thing that left the lasting impression on me was the seminal show in 1985 at the Bristol Arnafini, which was a show organized by 3D, aka Robert Del Naya, who um at that time obviously was firmly established in not only in bristol but in the wider uk scene as being one of the first artists of his generation um and it was mainly showed it featured and showcased local artists so fading jaffa you had bsd squad you had knit walker and then he had some invited guests which was a guy called pride from a seminal london's outfit called grown angels who in themselves are really really highly respected within the graffiti scene for being one of the very first er early crews to, to to be getting up with this art form and you also had uh the launch night you had the wall bunch mm -hmm. sound system playing you had breakers you had art on the walls, you had photography, you had photographs from Henry Chalfon, um, you, you, you had basically a seminal show that uh, lots of people came away from that show who attended it, they weren't necessarily artists, but became inspired by that show. Mm -hmm. So then you had the progression from that show and then for me, a next important milestone in, in the history of Bristol Graffiti is Barton Hill and the work that I did there. Not so much the work I did there, but the effort by the British Transport Police to actually try and shut down the whole scene in 1989 with Operation Anderson, which still to this day gets covered in many, many uh, stories and, and documentaries about Bristol and the UK graffiti scene, because it was a seminal period where my project was deliberately targeted. The police spent a year undercover investigating illegality in Bristol. And they wanted to, in the words of Tony Thompson, who was the head of British Transport Police at that time, eradicate this art form and stop it inspiring other young vandals to take up the aerosol can. Did it work? No. So that, that moment was pivotal because out of that came a lot of artists who, who decided to go legal, a lot of artists who decided to stop painting illegally, some stopped altogether. And then you had a kind of vacuum uh, where there was a bit of a law and then you had the next wave come through. And we're talking the 92 kind of period. You then had an impressionable young Banksy come through that kind of vacuum with some of the remnants of the original Barton Hill painters um and that then led for the next generation and the, the next seminal moment for me i would say is 1998 walls on fire show at the uh on anchor road where now you have the what was formerly called explore bristol it is called we the curious where banksy curated around 40 graffiti artists who come from around the uk to paint all the hoardings there it was a huge huge show and the, and the funny thing for me looking back is that many, many of the graffiti writers who painted there from London are all of always been associated with the kind of hashtag Team Robbo versus the Banksy mm -hmm. scenario. But at that time, Banksy had the links with all of that kind of London crew that many people have associate with the, the whole feud of the Banksy Robbo thing. And that that show was seminal. That was curated by Inky and Banksy working together. 
um, I had some small involvement where I was one of the sponsors. So an event like that was, wasn't was funded like you now have Arts Council funding or huge corporate sponsorship by paint companies like you do at a lot of the bigger events. That was solely funded by individuals like myself, Ronnie Size, the musician from Represent, yeah. Yeah. Mix Mag, the, the publication, um, Inky himself, and obviously Banksy. So... We kind of funded the the whole event in terms of paint. The hoardings were already up uh, via the contractor, and it was a huge seminal event. And then from there, fast forward, you you've obviously got the the, the early shows by Banksy, where he did the Greenleaf Bookshop, the Seven Shed Show, and then for me, without a shadow of doubt, the biggest show that really really ignited. Another interest in street art and the whole Banksy phenomenon was Banksy versus Bristol Museum in 2009. Yeah. We're hoping yeah. that the Vanguard show in June of this year is also going to be something that is going to be inspiring for a next generation, but also a reflection of the past from where we've come from over the last nearly 40 years, from its early roots and creativity of the illegality of the art form and how it's over many generations has made Bristol the city that it's known for in terms of its creative culture, its history. Uh, I'm kind of paying homage to the, 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 the vanguard, as they are called, the originals, and through to where we have now um, a global reputation as, as a city for its art. A lot of that is in, in part with the Banksy name, but when I do my street art tours, I always emphasize to people that there's a whole lot more history and culture to this city than one individual. He's a yeah. cog in the yeah. wheel. And there's a whole lot more to Bristol than just that one name that always gets associated with street art and the culture in Bristol. So there have been many, many seminal moments in the city um, that have cemented Bristol's place in history, uh, not only in the UK, but a global focus of attention and I think like I said out of all those periods I think the 2009 Banksy show was was huge the fact that 350,000 people attended that show is phenomenal I remember, I remember queuing for many hours um, outside Bristol Museum to get into that one I queued myself I, I went to the opening night but I queued at least three or four other times because I couldn't just go to that show and go once mm. because there was always something that I'd missed the first time I was there. And, you know, I took friends that friends or family that had traveled down from outside of areas of Bristol, you know, around the UK to actually go to the show. And um, a lot of them were completely blown away by how you could transform a, an old dusty museum into a cultural event like that. And it, it was a great event. As, as was Disneyland for Western Superman, yeah. but on a different scale and a different type of show. Yeah, I, I, I did manage to get to both of them. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed both. Um, one, of, one of my favourite artists was at the Disneyland. Um, she did a piece there, Jenny Holzer. Um, you know, I, I followed her work for quite a while and I saw her exhibition at the Baltic in um, Newcastle. So it was, it was good to see work of hers at the, at the, at the Disneyland um, place. So yeah, uh, great, great stuff. Um, so, last question: What's in store for the future um, for your street art tours? Um, I know, I know you've obviously the last twelve months has been very, very different experience for everybody. Um, so yeah, what, how's it, how's it all gonna pan out in the future? What's, what's the plans? Okay, so the the plans, obviously, because of pandemic, we we had to because of shot lockdown, we had to temporarily close down. Um, for street art tours but what we did during that time was it enabled myself and Rob who is wearing the wall basically look at the ways that we could use a real negative period into a positive period and look at ways that we could still be relevant and current and look at ways that where the wall could be different than just being seen as uh, a company that do Bristol street art tours so Myself and Rob, what we did is during lockdown, Rob is a software tech guy, basically. He's, he, he is a geeky software guy. And he developed um, 
a self-guided street art walking tour. First and foremost, it's a self-guided Banksy walking tour that individuals can basically click onto a link, you get sent an email, you get 14 locations in Bristol where there are either Banks's or there were previous Banks's. Um, I do the narrative. So when we were first discussing this, we, we did a narrative in a studio, a recording studio, and I'm playing it back after three hours of talking and editing. It sounded really clinical and we just didn't enjoy it. And we thought if we don't enjoy it, nor or nor the public. So we decided to actually physically go out and walk the tour itself and go to the locations. And it just brought a whole new different definition and, and vibrancy to the tour. And I, I fed off the fact that I was at the locations. I was talking directly about the artist, about the work, about previous works that was there and why the history of why this work is so seminal or why it was removed, etc. And, and talk about the variations between council policy from then to now and how it constantly moves or the goalposts get changed. Um, so we developed this tour during lockdown. It meant once lockdown was eased, and even if people weren't comfortable with joining us on our street art tours, they could actually go out as a family unit or as an individual if they were coming to Bristol on a day when our tours weren't running or they they just want to explore a city. That there was this option to for them to do, and it's been really well received. Um, so what we've also done since the this next lockdown that we're still currently in, Rob has developed five separate inner city walking tours that last around two hours. And you can go north, east, south or west in Bristol, mainly covering a lot of spots that we just don't cover in our general street art tour because it's very central my street art tour and there's a lot of areas that you just can't cover. To, to do Bristol justice, you would need to be there for a couple of days. You really would. You know yourself how much artwork there is in the city. It's ridiculous. So what Rob has done is develop these walking or cycling routes that you can go across to areas like Brislington, um, along the Temple Meads Cut and along the river there. You can go to St. Werberg's in Easton and St. Paul's and see the Seven Saints work there and other work by other prominent artists. You can go to the North Street one, which is obviously going to be a no-brainer just because of the sheer volume of work there. And then, then, then there's another one that includes kind of North Bristol, South Bristol. So we've developed all these different um, tours and self-guided tours because we know that one of the things that the government are trying to encourage is outdoor activities. Mm -hmm fitness well-being walking cycling whatever and we just wanted to be able to offer people if they don't want to come on a physical tour and listen to myself pontificating as someone once said uh, for two to two and a half hours that you can do this under your own steam once you've activated the uh connection to the app you just plug it into your smartphone your own headphones it lasts for three months that once you've downloaded the app so you don't even necessarily have to do it in one hit you could come to bristol several times or if you're in bristol for a weekend you could do one tour or pause it midway through and then re, re you know re-engage with the, the the walking tour after you've had a bit of lunch or some retail therapy if the need arises and we just want to do something different than just be just a bog standard walking tour and me personally i don't think we are a bog standard walking tour because we do it with with car with passion with knowledge with history um, and so the walking tours we're going to re-engage on May the 29th mm -hmm. um, after Rule of Six is dropped we're going to start off just doing weekends first and foremost just to see where the land lays in terms of interest from visitors from outside of Bristol we're not expecting international visitors this year we just don't think that's a, a no-goer during the school holidays, the six months, we're expecting to be a lot more busier. So we'll be running tours on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. So five days a week. But still, you have the option, if you were coming to Bristol on a Tuesday or Thursday or any of those days, mm -hmm. that you'll be able to do a self-guided virtual walking tour yourself, along with photographs to in interact. What we're also doing 
for our street art tours this year, we're going to be launching an app that goes runs alongside our tour. So sometimes during the tour, there might be a slight gap between going to location to location. So what we've built in into this app is photographs and some kind of narrative linked to moments of art where it was there. So under, for example, underneath the Banksy Well Hung Lover, directly below there in 1984 is where Delge from the Wall Bunch 3D painted his his famous piece they called the wall bunch which featured a caricature of the wall bunch themselves and we've got the actual image taken from the bridge as if you were viewing the well hung lover that directly below it was where 3d painted in 1984. we're also going to include the link that robert is also now and again linked to being the possible identity of Mr. Banksy. So we've added all these little extras in that are going to ru run alongside the tour, as well as with them, there is Google Map links to local creative galleries, to independent bookshops, to independent bars and restaurants, and support many, many people like ourselves who've struggled during the lockdown. So we want to support independent independence because we are an independent ourselves. And so Hopefully, fingers being crossed, regardless of the weather, that during the summer we'll have a, a busy summer, which I'm, I'm confident we will, re from, you know, just little green shoots of recovery, because we've been doing these tours for eight years now, and they're really well known, really well respected. We've got great reviews on TripAdvisor, um, and it's stuff that we grew from nothing to being one of the main recognised street art tours, not only in, in UK, but it, Globally, we've we've had people on our tours who who've done other street art tours in Buenos Aires, in Paris, in Berlin, been to Barcelona, and they all compare favourably the experience, you know. And so it's something we do with love and passion, and we don't do it for the money. It's not about money for us because at the end of the day, it's about showcasing creative culture of Bristol, but also the way the tour will be narrated uh, after lockdown. We're going to include parts about the Black Lives Matter protests. We're going to we're going to include about the Kill the Bill protests and how that fits in with the whole culture of what Bristol is also known for. So, you know, it's, we've had a chance to look at the narrative, look at the way we present the tour, and just freshen things up a bit, you know. And uh, and hopefully people will enjoy. Oh, it's it's great to hear. I, I'm going to have to get up to Bristol to um, to go on one of your tours because um, I think I think I'd thoroughly enjoy that. So, yeah. I think what you should do, and this is what I'm trying to do for a lot of people. We've had a lot of inquest in uh, inquirers already, so we've just put the new dates up on the website. We've also refreshed the website. So whilst lockdown's been going on, we we've still been doing what we need to do to. To, to work within the, the current situation and what we're recommending to a lot of people is that if they're thinking of coming to Bristol for my my tour or for the tour if Rob leads it on a Sunday is to tie it in with the Vanguard show yeah. because you get two for the price of one you can do our tour early morning be finished by kind of lunchtime have some lunch and then you can go off and take the Vanguard show because the Vanguard show is going to be such a great show because of what is going to be contained within the show the people that are involved as creatives include people like dicey grand paris dolls um inky felix braun who who wrote children of the can richard jones from tangent books who've wrote all the obvious obviously culture related books in bristol you've got um artwork by certain Bristol artists that hasn't seen the light of day for over 20 years and including Banksy original artworks too. The whole show is going to be possibly for me and many others involved the probably the best show that Bristol has had as a city since the Banksy museum show and we're hoping that you know a lot of people will, will, will come to the show. Originally it was meant to be last year obviously Covid put pay to that but what is meant is that the 12 months that they've had They've used that time constructively to make the show a better show. There's also seminars and film screenings. 
running throughout the duration of the show. So the show runs from 26th of June right up until October the 31st. So you've got lots of, like I said, lots of seminars, lots of TED Talks. You've got audience, uh, an audience with, so certain people that are at the show or, or involved in similar moments in the documenting of graffiti in the UK, film directors, artists, they're going to be doing Q&A sessions, screenings of films. So most of those will take place at the Arnafini or at the Watershed. So it's just not going to be a gallery type of show. It's going to be a whole immersive experience and it's, a, it's going to be a great thing for Bristol. So I would recommend anyone who was thinking of doing a street art tour to actually try and tie it in with that weekend. Or if not that, maybe when Cheltenham Paint Festival's on in September. Again, you could kill two birds with one stone. They're so close to one another. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it, it, I, I could talk to you all day, John. Um. <laughs> I could talk for hours, and I, I've I've been known to um, talk. So the Banksy film you mentioned earlier that you've seen, the rise of outlaw art, I probably appear in the film maybe ten minutes out of two. That interview was six hours. <laughs> Six hours long. So, so I'm going to show. I'm going to show my ignorance here, John. Have you written a book yet? Okay, I haven't written a book, and many, many people have said, "John, you've got to write a book. You've got to write a book. You've got so much history." And the thing is, I'm also known in Bristol not just because of the R and my graffiti links, but because of my involvement with Bristol youth culture prior to you know. So I was involved with the early punk, new wave scene. Early 80s football casual scene. I'm a reformed football hooligan, as a few people know. Then I was heavily involved with the acid house scene of the late 80s. Then I progressed into being a promoter in the, the, the rave scene of like kind of 1991 through to the millennium. I was heavily involved with Bristol musical fest, music festivals. I worked for NAS Festival at Shepton Mallet, which was the extreme sports festival. And I've got a lot of history to my name and I've been involved with so many scenes and so much diversity. But one thing always seems to come through, and I'm not bigging myself up here, I do retain a lot of respect within Bristol and within those kind of scenes that I've been involved with for being someone who's always had a passion or a love and someone who's always been on the level. And, you know, I've, I've been involved with a lot of great things and got a lot of history. And I've been approached by two people to write a book and I've never felt the time was right mm -hmm. I've never had the time possibly to sit down and write a book and I've been approached by two people who both have offered to ghost write yeah, yeah. Um, both of them have produced books in their own right both of them have got publishing houses and it would just generally cover my life kind of not like a life story but my journey from um a naughty youth from when I was around 15 and what I got involved with to my progression into youth work and the various art scenes and cultures that I've been involved with to the present day. Title, A View From The Hill. So A View From The Hill is my view growing up and living and working and those experiences on me in Barton Hill to yeah. the present day. Yeah. So it's possible uh, and it's just the timing and knowing that I give it 100%. If I don't give 100%, I don't get involved with anything. I either give my all or I don't get involved at all. And so it's something I really want to do because I feel that I'm, I'm 60 next year, which is crazy, really. I'm not a young man. And I look back and think I would dearly love to get something down in print, yeah, whether it be yeah, yeah. physical print as a book or online. But the two people I've been talking with, they want to do a book. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Because I've also got archival footage related to all those things that I, I mentioned, you know. Yeah, but I just I just have yeah, a love but, a love but, for but, alternative but, culture. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I was thinking, is it's sort of like coffee table book of street art tour of Bristol type thing, you know, um with, with just your information that you've got in your head about the art and the, the locations and stuff in Bristol. Um, but it look, it sounds to me like you've got about ten books. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is people can ask me something and i can't remember what i did yesterday but you asked me where i was at a particular date in a particular time and what i did in that year and 
and and who painted in 1985 at a certain location or here i remember everything yeah. it's just weird seriously well like i said i could talk to you all day john but unfortunately we've got to bring this to an end um it's, it's been an absolute delight talking to you and i've learned so much and i hope that people uh, who are watching and listening um well, like I said, ho hopefully hopefully they they enjoy just th this little snippet because obviously i'm not an artist i've never been an artist in my life i always get asked like when i was involved with graffiti were you a graffiti artist were you a writer never never once i've never been artistic in my life but i've always had an appreciation of people that are expressive that are able to create art whether that be digital whether that be media whether that be canvas whether that would be on walls whether that would be whatever the surface is and the medium that's applied to it i just love art it, uh, of yeah. all forms i mean that that comes across quite clearly in your passion for um, uh, the bristol street art and, and things that and as you can see you can see behind me there's a couple of <laughs> yeah. bits and pieces but recognizable I, I, pieces we 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 got I mean, lots and lots of art in this house of ours. Many of it's still in its tubes, not framed. And one thing I'm conscious of, I don't want to take over our, our whole family home and turn it into kind of some mini gallery. So I've got limitations on how much artwork I've got, but um, I just I just love art, serious. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great talking to you, John. Uh, thank you so much you. for giving me some of your time on this. Um, lovely Saturday. Um, thank you. Excellent. And I'll give, obviously, I'll give a plug to the channel and I'll share it on my Facebook outlet and wear the wall as well. For Brilliant. Sure. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'll put some links below the um, video for people, anybody watching, um, so that you can um, find out more about John and what, he, what it is he does and the tours. Um, if you've enjoyed what you've um, seen today and what you've heard today, then please subscribe to my channel below and also hit the like button on the, on the video. Um, the more likes it gets, the more YouTube shares it. So um, please do that for me. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to John and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.